Hi, I'm going to go over integration by part for brief calculus students. If you are watching this and you are in a different kind of calculus class, brief calculus means we don't have trig functions. So as I go through the integration by part, you'll see exponential functions and log, natural log functions. No trig. I'm going to call this part one because I have 37 slides and 15 minutes to record. So I think we'll have a couple parts here. As I go through, I'll review U substitution and then introduce integration by parts because I want you to see the difference between the two. I have three examples. Um, the third one, I'll show how do you know if something's going wrong and what do you do about it. And last of all, repeated integration by parts. So we did U substitution uh, when we did the chain rule with derivative. We said, okay, why don't we let what's in the parentheses be U, and then we're looking at the derivative of U, and as we do this, I added on a little end piece called DU. Usually we don't add that on because we're taking the derivative of a variable. Well, in this case, we're taking the derivative of a function, so we need to say, we have the derivative of the function, which happens to be 3x squared plus 1. So we're going to substitute those back in to the answer and put a box around it and we're done. Now if we take some similar things and put it in integration, well, let's see what happens. The more complicated piece, the one that has the higher power, we call u. I don't need to worry about, the, I'm trying to find the mouse, sorry, the numerical deriv, uh, numerical power, because that's really easy to take care of. But the x cubed plus x is more complicated than 3x squared plus 1, which just happens to be the derivative of this. And we're going to include the dx in here, uh, even though I said we were you know, derivative of a variable like x, we usually don't write down. Well, it is written down in the integral, and we are going to need it. Uh, you'll see it in example two, why we need to have the dx included. So, substituting this in, we get u to the 99th power du. And you're not done, because you have to substitute what u is back into the function. So that was u substitution with integration. Now when we do integration by parts, we'll still have two functions in there, but neither one will be a derivative of the other. If you think one's the derivative, then you might not need integration by parts. So the three examples we're going to have Classic x, uh, integral of x right, times e to the x dx. Uh, well, let's make it a little more complicated. We've got a, a different point in the polynomial and a e to a higher power or a more complicated power and a natural log. So like you said, no trig functions in this class. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to go get a drink. So we have some considerations we look at. Um, does one of the two functions we, we have have an easy derivative? Is there a really easy antiderivative? And is one of the functions a polynomial? Back when I was taking AP Calculus, we memorized this formula, which works really well if you don't have to keep repeating. I'm going to show you the table because if you do keep repeating, the table works a lot better. But I wanted to point out a couple things on, oh, sorry, from the this formula right here. One of those pieces is a derivative, and we can integrate it. We're going to need to. It it's usually the one that has a really nice antiderivative, one that kind of repeats. So, uh, if you're doing trig, you know sine and cosine repeat. 
However, uh, in brief calculus, we only were about, say, e to the x or some other constant like 2 to the x. Those functions repeat nicely in antiderivatives. Now, the other part I need to show is this other function right here has to have a derivative. So if you have a, f a function in here that doesn't have a, a derivative, uh, you better be careful what you do. And the whole basic idea from this formula is that you're taking a derivative that has two pieces inside it. There's the mouse, sorry. Two pieces inside it. You're trying to break it up into two easier pieces. And hopefully this integration is a lot easier to use. So we start asking, is there an easy derivative? Um, usually polynomials are the ones we're looking for. Okay, it's easy to find derivative of x, and x can even be a, a polynomial if you need it. So instead of using this formula right here, we are going to use the table. And it looks like this. It's, it's got three columns, and we've got a, a plus and minus side. In the first one, we take the derivative. So which one of these had the easier derivative? Well, the x was super easy. So we take, we just write the x in, and then we take its derivative. Now, on the next column over, okay, what's left over should hopefully be able to... Sorry, I don't know what just happened with the mouse there. Uh, we should be able to take an integration with it. So we just take, I mean, everything that's left and write it in there. And so let me move the screen up just a little. Come on, mouse. There. Hopefully these two pieces are obvious. Usually it's first and second like this. But this top row should completely take what was in the integrand. What was in some, you know, behind the integration sign. So this one went to, to the derivative. This one goes to the integral, so or the antiderivative. Come on. And we kind of abbreviate with d for derivative and i for integral. And this this plus and minus column right here is important. The plus sign means you're not going to change the sign for the first term. And right here, we're going to sub be subtracting the integral for the second part. So, how do you use the table? Well, you have to practice it, for one. Okay, ready? Here we go. We multiply down x times e to the x, and it's a positive term, we'll just write that down. Then we come along the bottom, and we subtract the integral, and I had to switch the order right here, e to the x dx. So taking the integral or antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x, it's negative, we add a c, put a box around it, we're done. All right, a second example, one that was a little bit harder with a polynomial, but is still the easy derivative, and e to the negative 2x will be the one that we can take the integral of really easy. It's fairly stable. I mean, because it has a negative exponent, it's going to switch between positive and negative, back and forth, back and forth, but that's still pretty stable. So let's pull the table up. Alright, so we have the first term in the derivative column and the second term in the integration column and that takes care of everything right there in our integrand. Derivative 3 dx. Integral, uh, let's see, if I took the derivative it would be negative 2, so when I take the integral it has to be divided by negative 2. Okay, just double checking. So let's go ahead and use the table method to write down what the uh, integral is if we 
integrate it by part. So we just multiply. Um, on a diagonal basis, it's going to be positive. Then we subtract. And I kind of split up the 3 and the dx, so 3 dx. So it's just multiplied together and um, let's simplify. I don't like negatives in the denominator. Okay. All right, so I move it up to the numerator. It's easier to, for me to see. And this becomes positive. Let's just pull it out and make it a function. All right, so why don't we use u substitution? Okay, we'll let u equal, go oh, back up, you're ruining my surprise. Okay, we'll let u equal negative 2 to the x and du equals negative 2 dx. And why is this important? Because in the integrand we only have dx instead of negative 2 dx, so if we want to have something to substitute in for dx, we've got to solve for dx. So in this case, dx equals negative one-half du. So you see why I said that dx is going to be important. So when we substitute in, get back there. What were you doing? Okay, so, maybe, sorry, wave the mouse around. We're going to have u, e to the u and then what this is for dx, we're going to put in right there. So it looks like negative one-half e to the u du. All right, now you can proceed. So, uh, oh yeah, don't forget what u is. So just trying to straighten things out, not lose our negative sign. Okay, we've got, uh, not forgetting what u is, and not forgetting to add c. Put a box around it, we're done. Alright, that was example two. I'm at 12 minutes 30 seconds, so I'm going to stop the video and make another one. Thank you.